Have you ever wondered what the requirements are to becoming a foster parent? Well, stick around and I'll get into seven requirements for becoming a foster parent and exactly how long the process takes. Hi friends, I'm Anna Leonora and together with my husband Jason, we are foster parents in real life. And here on my channel from the fosters, we do foster parenting life together. We raise awareness for the foster care system and purposeful living. And if any of that interests you, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel to join our growing cyber family here on YouTube. To be a foster parent, you must be licensed through the state in which you live. And every state, county, and agency have different requirements for becoming a foster parent. However, there are seven requirements that are the same or very similar across the board. So I'm gonna get right into those. The first requirement for becoming a foster parent is that you and your spouse, if you're married, and all adults living in the home pass a background check. Now, I realize you may live in a home with other adults who are not interested in being the foster parent, but these children were moved largely for reasons of abuse and neglect, and the state wants to make sure these children are going to homes that are safe. So all adults living in the home must pass a background check. And they're looking for things like past drug abuse, domestic violence. They're looking for if you or any adult in the house has any history with Child Protective Services where you have been charged or found to be abusing or neglecting children. And again, this is just to make sure that the people living in the home where they're going to place these children are safe individuals for the children to be around. The second requirement for becoming a foster parent is that you must pass a financial check. Now, they wanna make sure that you and your family are financially able to support yourself. And typically that means without government assistance because while foster parents do get a stipend for having a foster child in their home, that stipend is to cover the needs of that child. It's not to make money for the foster family. And if you are making money off being a foster parent, you're doing it wrong. Often foster parents end up spending more money than the stipend every month on the needs of the child, depending on the child's age, depending on if they're in diapers, drinking formula, if they're in school and need school supplies, how much clothes they did come with. So often, foster parents do spend more than the stipend a month. And the government wants to make sure that your family can sustain the financial needs of your family without government assistance and without the stipend from the child. You do not have to be rich by any means. In fact, many foster parents do live paycheck to paycheck or aren't wealthy, but you do have to be able to pay for the needs of your family. The third requirement to becoming a foster parent is that you must pass a fire inspection. Your home has to be deemed safe by the fire marshals. So what does that mean? That means having a fire escape plan, which we hand drew. It does not need to be anything fancy. We hand drew ours and it's I'm not an artist. You have to have a fire extinguisher. Typically they want one on each floor. It has to be in good working condition. You have to have working fire alarms and a working carbon monoxide detector. And they wanna make sure that your house is up to code to prevent any preventable fires. The fourth requirement for becoming a foster parent is a series of home visits home studies, home checks, it's called a couple different things. In my county, we had to complete three home studies prior to ever being licensed. And after becoming licensed, we have to have one home visit by a social worker every month while there is a child currently in our care and one every quarter by the licensing worker to maintain our foster parent license. They're looking for things like, is your home structurally sound and safe. There's no holes in the floor or things the kids can trip over from floorboards being pulled up, the foundation safe, things like that. And they're also looking for if the home is childproof. 
What I mean by that is that there's plugs, plug covers in the outlets, that your chemicals are out of reach or locked up, your medications are locked up, any alcohol or weapons in the home are locked up, and they're not where children can get into them. They're also looking for things like knives and scissors being out of reach of children. The other big thing that they're looking for is that your home is not within eyesight or 120 feet of a body of water, and that includes a pool. So in my county, and again, it's different for every state, county, and agency, but in my county, through my agency, you are allowed to have an in-ground pool if it has a fence, a four-foot fence, all the way around the pool that locks. And you can have an above ground pool if it has a removable ladder so that children cannot get into it. If you have a body of water such as a pond, a lake, a river, an ocean, within eyesight or within 120 feet of your home, you are required to have a fence around your entire yard. And yes, that includes the front yard. So often people don't have that big fence around the front yard, but if you have the fence all the way around your entire yard, and you're close enough to a lake, then that's fine, but you have to have the, the fence. And I believe it has to be four or six feet for our agency to be able to make sure that you're keeping the kids away from water and away from accidental drowning. The fifth requirement for becoming a foster parent is a medical and mental physical. Yes, signed off by your doctor. Now, it's okay if you have chronic health conditions or have a mental health past, as long as you and your doctor can prove that your mental health issues, your medical issues are well controlled with medications and or therapies. It's okay to have chronic health conditions. In fact, my husband and I do. My husband has sleep apnea, which is well controlled with his CPAP machine. I have an autoimmune disorder called autoimmune Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and it is well controlled with medication that I have to take every single day, and I'm followed closely by my doctor. But what they don't want to happen is they don't want someone who has a medical condition that may deteriorate very quickly. And the reason for this is because they're putting a vulnerable child in your care and they don't want to have to disrupt that child's placement with you and potentially cause more trauma to the child because of some foreseeable medical concern or issue. While it's okay to have the medical and mental history and conditions, they just wanna make sure that you are safe, healthy, and stable enough to care for these children. Number six, in most states, you have to be 21 years of age to become a foster parent. That's pretty self-explanatory. I believe I have heard there's potentially some states where you have to be 25, but for the most part, I've heard the age is 21 years old. And the seventh and final requirement for becoming a foster parent is that you have to complete a training course. This is a licensure. It is something that you have to have education for and you have to have continuing education to maintain. So in every state, it is called something different. It is approximately 30 hours for most states. I've heard it called Pride, I've heard it called Unity, but in my state, it's called TIPS MAP. And I'm actually gonna reference my notes for this because it's a very long title. So TIPS MAP stands for Trauma-Informed Partnering for Safety, Model Approach to Partnership in Parenting which is a really long, fancy way of saying, you've been trained to help parent children of trauma. It is, like I said, typically 30 hours of training. Every state, county, and agency will do those 30 hours differently. In my county, we did three hours of training every week for 10 weeks. I have heard of it being done on weekend days, 10 hour days on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I have heard of it done a couple different ways, but in my county, we went three hours a week on Thursday nights for 10 weeks. Now for the time frame, how long does it take to become a licensed foster parent? And the answer is, it depends. 
Again, it depends on the state you're in, the county you're in, and the agency you're being licensed through. I have heard of it taking as little as two to three months. I've heard of it taking as long as eight months to a year. For my husband and I, it took six months. We could have done it faster than that. But what we were waiting on was we needed to get our home ready. My husband and I are not parents to biological children. Our home was not set up for children. It was not child-proofed. We didn't have beds, cribs, changing tables, dressers. We had to get all of those things and child-proof our home before we could be licensed. And it took us a while to do that. It also depends on how long the background check takes. Background checks can take as little as one week. They can take as much as a couple months. So if your state is backed up on their background checks, it might take a little bit longer. And again, there's different requirements for different agencies, but I've heard of it being anywhere typically from three to eight months. If you're interested in learning more about what it takes to be a foster parent in your area, in your community, I encourage you to Google your county and foster care and see what your county's local Department of Social Services has to say about the requirements for becoming a foster parent in your area. Our local county DSS page also has testimonials from local foster parents. So you can read more about what foster parents in your area have to say. Also, if you're interested in learning more about the foster care system, consider subscribing to my channel because here again on my channel, we do foster parenting life together and raise awareness for the foster care system. So if that interests you, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more content from me. As always, friends, until next time, go out and shine your light into the world.